Haiku, we're back. Um, so we're going to begin with um, Punnett squares. And very quickly, I'm going to do a very quick review of what is homozygous and what is heterozygous. Okay, so, oh, I forgot. Here I am. Bam, I'm on the pen. I don't like that pen. It's all big. I'm going to go that one. So what is homozygous? All right, well, homozygous, the word homo, and please don't laugh because it's not funny, uh, means the same, okay? So that means you have two alleles that are the same, okay? So for example, if I'm using, let's use uh, T's as our example, homozygous would be big T, big T, that's homozygous. And these are alleles, these are uh, different forms of the same gene on the same place in on chromosomes, okay? And we also have little t, little t. Which one would be homozygous dominant? It's pretty clear, I think. Um, homozygous dominant would be this one, which is dominant. So homozygous dominant, and this one would be recessive. Okay, so we have two homozygous. We have two homozygotes, or possible alleles in our gametes, which can be homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. On the next one, we have heterozygous. And there's only one type of heterozygote, even though you can change the order, it's kind of the same. It's big T, little t in this case, and that's a really bad T. Or the exact same thing, which would be little t, big T. Okay, whoops, that's a bad T. Here we go. All right, so now what are we going to do right now? We're going to answer question number five from section 11.2, which is in the worksheet I gave you on Friday. Section assessment. Number five, that's what we're working on. Okay, so it says the F1 plant, that is homozygous for shortness. Okay, if you uh, remember in the previous reading, homozygous for shortness, and shortness is a recessive allele, okay, or a recessive gene. So what we're going to do is we're going to put, let's set our key. So shortness, little t, short, short plants, okay. And then obviously, if you keep reading, um, the other trait that's counter to shortness, if you go back to the other worksheet, is tall, tallness, okay? All right, so let's go down a little bit. Okay, so we have short and tall. So it says <clears throat> an F1 plant that is homozygous for shortness, so homozygous for shortness. So here we go. I'm going to go back to my black. And so homozygous for shortness, that's what that is, right? is crossed with a heterozygous plant. So here's a big cross. It's crossed with a heterozygous. There you go. Does everybody see that? What probability that a C from the cross will produce a tall plant? Well, it says use a Punnett square to explain your answer. Compare the probable genetic variations in the F2 plants. Remember, probability. It involves Punnett squares. So here I go, drawing a square. Bam, look at that. And then I'm going to go to the blueage. Let's make these blue this time. I'm going to set little t, little t. And on this side, I'm going to set big t, little t. I'm going to do my cross. So now that we have this all set up, the question is, whoa, I hit the mic there. Keep that there. Boop, boop. OK. Now the question is, how do we answer the question? It says, how many tall plants would be? Well, it's a lot of answers, and that's actually asking for the phenotypic ratio, right? Phenotype, how tall it is. So let's just do the genome and phenotypic ratios here, and then we'll be able to answer those questions really easy. So here I go. I'm going to do the uh, phenotypic first, I guess. It's a little bit harder, but that's okay. It's not even that hard, but, you know, ration. Whoa, it's a race set. Look at this. Oh, look at that. Gone. All right, so here we go, phenotypic ratio. So what do they look like? Well, I look at these. These bottom two here are obviously going to look like what? They're going to be short. So there's going to be two short, okay, to two, look on top, two tall. Yeah, even though, and why are they tall? Just remember that the big T is dominant, to two tall, okay? So that obviously goes to two to two, or one to one. This is very similar to the other one that um, I gave you on the worksheet. You'll find that these are relatively easy and there's patterns, but we haven't quite recognized a lot of them yet. But we're just going to practice these, okay? 
So we have genotypic ratios. Okay, the genotypic ratio, well, obviously, we have big T, little t. How many of those do we have? We have two. And how many little t's we have? We have two, little t, little t's. And that obviously goes to, fast forward, one to one. Bam, this one's done. This is very much similar to the other one. That is off of the worksheet entitled, How to Use Punnett Squares to Predict Outcomes of Crosses. Um, this is no, very similar to number three. Okay, um, great, and we're done.